Now that we have calculated the voltage at the middle of the line as a function of time, let's do one other one. Let's do the same calculation we did before. Let me find the two and a half tau point. That's right here. 2.5 tau. And let's find the voltage on the line at two and a half tau. So here is z equals zero, here is z equal l, and we're going to do the same thing that we did before. I drew my dashed line across, and I'm going to find the junction points right here. Oh, and look, there's another one there now, this one right there. So let's go back to our black color and consider what happens up to that point. Well, up to this point, we're going to have one set of voltages. Up to this point, we're going to have another set of voltages. And on the right, there's going to be another side. So let's see. On this left-hand side, I'm going to have this plus this. That adds up to zero. This one plus this one. That add up, adds up to zero. And this one plus that one. That adds up to zero, too. So at this point, I'm going to have zero voltage. Now what do I have? between these two lines right here. I have these two adding up to zero, and these two adding up to zero, and I have V2 plus. But V2 minus hasn't gotten there yet, so I have a pulse with a magnitude of V2 plus. Now how about on this right-hand side? These two add to zero, these two add to zero, and nothing else has gotten there yet. So there is my voltage on the line. It looks like a pulse. Not surprisingly, of course, because my generator looked like a pulse, and it's going to be sending a pulse down the line, and back, and down the line, and back, and so on. So that's how we can handle a nice rectangular pulse for our voltage generator. We're able to find the voltage at some point on the line as a function of time, and we are able to handle the voltage on the whole line, voltage on the whole line at some particular time. I'm just going to make a note here that this is at two and a half tau. Now let's consider what would happen if my voltage generator had a pulse that had more shape to it. Let's say that it's shaped like this. Oh, well, that's a very interesting pulse, and it might look like something strange to me, but not really. What I'm going to do is model that as a rectangular pulse, and I'm going to choose my red color for the falling side, like this. So I'm going to model this exactly the same way I modeled my rectangular pulse. I'm going to consider my bounce diagram, like so, same as I did before with V1 plus, V1 minus, V2 plus, and so on. V1 plus, V1 minus, V2 plus, and V2 minus. I'm going to consider the negative value right here. Actually, let me draw those as solid lines because I have colors. If you look on my old exams, I've probably driven, drawn most of the lines as dashes because I didn't have another color of pen. So this is going to be minus V1 plus, and minus V1 minus, and minus V2 plus, and minus V2 minus. Then if I want to consider the voltage at the center of the line, at L over 2, as a function of time, I'm going to draw my system just as I did before. Here's time, and here's the voltage at the center of the line. And every place I have a junction, I'm going to draw my lines across. And let's do that for the red one also. Okay, now what I'm going to do is the same exact same thing that I did before, which is recognize I have zero here, V1 plus in this range, V1 minus in this range, and V2 plus in this range. Maybe positives, maybe negatives. But Look what happens. I have this interesting shape pulse. So let me blow up this V1 plus value and show you how I'm going to handle that. So I'm just kind of blowing up this picture, like so. I'm just going to trace this wave on top of my other.